would like to present one of our study results on heavy metal contamination sources and potential risk assessment of PM 2.5 in the vicinity of a lead smelter industry in East Java, Indonesia. Talking about air pollution, this is a global phenomenon and one of the greatest environmental challenges we face today. That more than 50% of the world mega cities were located in Asia. That people live in Asia are the most at risk of ambient air pollution. Air pollution rank highest of the global burden of disease besides water, occupational and other pollution such as soil, etc. This is the correlation uh, between air pollution and heavy metal. It is found that in the vicinity of industrial area, heavy metals could affect the air and soil, as well as the vegetation grown in the soil. The heavy metal accumulation pathways could be harmful to the human population. The heavy metals such as zinc, chromium, manganese, iron, copper, and lead in PM 2.5 were found to be associated with the PM toxicity and their co-exposure can cause the damage of biological cell and a high mortality of human cells. The lead smelter in Indonesia, this is uh, the map distribution of the lead smelter in Indonesia, that there are more than 200 of used lead acid battery and lead smelters which are located in several areas in Java, mostly in Jakarta, Tangerang, Tegal, the central Java, and this is the East Java. The lead or battery recycling smelter, it can emit the lead and other heavy metal particulates into the air, which can be carried down wind and deposited in soil and may expose the people surrounded through the inhalation the injection and food chain. The lead and its impact. The lead exposure and poisoning in the children living near lead smelter continues to occur in developed and developing country. The lead is considered to be hazardous due to its persistent, highly toxic and bioaccumulative. The effect of lead exposure in children who are the most susceptible groups can cause the hearing, behavior, and learning problems, anemia, slower growth, lower IQ, and hyperactivity. This picture shows that the lead contamination could increase the special need kids and also decrease the gifted kids due to lower the IQ. The blood lead level research, the study by Harianto found that the very high blood lead level in children living near the used lead acid battery recycling smelter identify that many children in this area were having difficulty in achieving high grades at school and also having stunting or other problems with physical development. And other study by Hindratmo, also by the NGO KPBB in the Tangara, from all the subject, subject study of the elementary school, none of them, the blood lead level uh, below the WHO limit or the CDC limit. So all of the subject study all above the limit from the CDC and the WHO. This is uh, the research objective of this study, that um, from the background of the lead contamination and also industrial impact, the characterization of, of the heavy metal prior to the industrial activity is crucial to understand the environmental impact of those activity, particularly in the location where this activity located are close to the agricultural ecosystem and human, human living environment. However, only limited number of information are available on the characteristic and level of heavy metal in ambient particulate emission from industrial areas, especially let's melter in Indonesia. 
Therefore, in this study, the characterization of lead and other heavy metal in fine particulate matter, PM2.5, collected in the vicinity of lead smelter in Lamongan, East Java, will carry on. We hope that by identifying the heavy metal contamination in the ambient air and its potential risk assessment to the environmental, it could be used as an evidence and reference for the government and related stakeholders to design the policy and take a proper action to reduce the pollution and minimize the impact to the human health. This is the sampling location. The sampling was conducted in the Lamongan, Lamongan Regency of East Java. Uh, the Lamongan is a regency uh, that have a population more than 1.45 million inhabitants. The land of Lamongan is more than 43.8% is used for the agricultural purpose. And the sampling site, which is signed by this yellow star, is located 1.7 kilometer northeast from the lead smelter. This is the lead smelter. And two kilometers, two kilometers north of the main national coast highway and surrounded by the rice field and close to a plumbing pipe factory and a wood industry. This is the sampling procedure that the samples were collected using the GAN stack filter unit using uh, PM2.5 were collected on 0 0.4 micrometer, micrometer nucleopore filters. The sampling was conducted in April until May 2015. We did the sample, the sampling three until four times a week, and a total of 21 samples were collected. Then the airborne particulate matter samples were stored in clean polyethylene bag and placed in the clean room. For the analysis, PM and black carbon. The PM analysis was determined using the graphimetric method, using the metal Toledo microbalance. Before the waging, the filter was conditioned in a room with humidity between 45 until 55% and the temperature is 18 until 25 degrees Celsius. For the BC analysis, the determination of black carbon is based on the process of light reflection. The absorption and reflection of visible light by the airborne particulate matter in the filter depends on the particle concentration, the density, the refractive index, and the size of particle. The BC was determined using a digital smoke stain refractometer. This is for the elemental characterization. We use the sample analysis using the EDSRF epsilon 5 with nine secondary targets. The method validation was also applied by measuring the standard reference material from SRM NIS 2783, the air particulate and the filter media. This is a routine and employed as a quality control. The ratio between measure result and certified value range from 0.92% to 1.09%. As we can see in this video that all the element measure has a good recovery. This is for the data analysis. For the data analysis, we use the PCA, principal component analysis, using the stat graphic plus software. And for the assessment of the risk, we use the ADD, average daily dose, hazard question, and hazard index. And for the average risk of carcinogenic, calculated by the equation, using the ELCR, excess life, excess life cancer risk from inhalation. This is the result and discussion. As we can see in the figure, the PM2.5 concentration of a six week sampling period show that the average uh, concentration of PM2.5 in Lamongan was 17.5, with range from 70.3 to 30.9 microgram per meter cubic. 
if these are assumed to represent the annual mean of PM 2.5 levels, then it would exceed the Indonesian National Ambient Air Quality Standard for annual mean of PM 2.5. Comparison, the PM 2.5 with other industrial sites in Tangerang, the Tangerang site was identified as having lead air pollution. It has the same characteristic as Lamongan site, which is located near, PB smel uh, near the PB smelter industry. And the, the PM 2.5 in the Lamongan was slightly lower than Tangerang site. However, compared to other cities in the same province in East Java, the PM 2.5 value collected in Lamongan was higher than the value reported by our study in the city of Surabaya site one and site two. It was also higher than the reported value for site Waru, Sidoarjo, and also Wilangun, the West Surabaya. The sampling site, Lamongan is located near a lead smelter surrounded by rice field and several small roads and highway. This is the black carbon concentration. The figures show that the concentration of black carbon during the sampling period has no extreme fluctuation and it ranges from 2.1 to 4.5 microgram per meter cubic. The black carbon is the major component of PM 2.5 where the ratio of black carbon to PM 2.5 were 11 to 30% with average of 19%. The potential sources of black carbon in urban area are generally dominated by incomplete combustion processes, such as biomass burning and transportation. The emission from rice husk burning was likely to be the source of the black carbon in Lamongan. This is the elemental concentration. As we can see in the figure, the sulfur had the highest concentration following by other elements such as lead, potassium, iron, and zinc. The high sulfur concentration could be due to the high sulfur content fuel used in the diesel vehicle. While lead is the second highest element in PM 2.5, the lead concentration were attributed on average of 2.7% of PM 2.5. Comparison, the lead concentration in Lamongan with other industrial sites in Indonesia in this table. The tables show that the average of lead in Lamongan was in the similar level with industrial site one and two in Tangerang. However, it was higher than other sites in the same province is Java, in Surabaya, Waru, and Osobilang. This is the correlation uh, between the crustal element, aluminum, silica, calcium, and iron. The high concentration of aluminum, silica, calcium, and titanium which are crystal elements were identified in PM 2.5. The figures show that there is a good multiple correlation plot for the soil component. While for the PCA result, the five factors were identified, explaining 82.1% of the total PM 2.5 variants. We have five factor and the five factor, the first factor with 40.7% of variance associated with the crystal element and biomass burning, which is indicated by the black carbon and potassium that is strongly related to biomass combustion. The biomass burning activities such as rice husk burning was often seen during the study period in the husk bursting time. In this picture, the high loading of copper was also observed that was expected to be related to the plumbing far factory located in the southeast of the sampling site. For the second factor, with 14.2% of variance, it has high loading of sulfur and zinc. And also the crustal element 
aluminium, silicon, calcium, titanium, and iron. This factor is assumed to be related to the vehicle emission and road dust indicated from the high sulfur and zinc and the crustal element. The presence of zinc was found in the composition of brake lining and tire accumulated in the road dust. Zinc is used for lubricating oil, while sulfur is related to the fuel combustion of diesel vehicle which contain of high sulfur. The sampling location is located near the main highway with a heavy number of vehicles. While the third factor with 11.9% of variance is clearly indicating the lead smelter. This result clarified the emission source from the, the lead smelting industry. In the fourth, and six fact and the fifth factor were mainly associated with the high loading only for chromium and nickel, respectively. The chromium may originate from the industrial emission. Other study reported that chromium with lead and antimon can be released by cement plant and metal manufacturing processes. Because there are several metal industries in the site, chromium is probably emitted from the industrial sources. Well, a large amount of nickel would be emitted from the shipping emission. Nickel had been also reported to be coming from the oil refinery and thermoelectric plants. It was found that there is a shipping activity in Surabaya port in a radius within 50 kilometers from the sampling location. Thus, nickel was considered as a signature emission from the shipping activity. This is the risk assessment result that we use the ADD, HQ, and HY. HI. The hazard question for lead is the highest value both for children and adults group. By hazard question and hazard index less than one, there is small possibility for non-cancer health risk to occur, but still lead remain pose a threat for children's health. Hence, Lead was more potentially hazardous as compared to chromium and nickel. This is the summary of excess life cancer risk for lead, chromium, and nickel. The table summarizes the excess life cancer risk with assumption of 17, 70 years lifetime. The LCR value for lead also significantly higher than other metal, chromium, and nickel. It was found that the adults in cancer risk assessment were more affected than the children since the exposure time was longer than children. However, this ELCR value of lead in adults was slightly higher than the minimal acceptable risk level. And the total of ELCR value was 1.81 times 10 to minus six, indicating that two cancer cases can occur per 1 million inhabitants at Lamoine site. That's all our result, and the conclusion is that characterization of PM 2.5 collected in the vicinity of a lead smelter industry was carried out to identify the pollutant sources and potential risk assessment. The potential of five factors with significant high loadings were extracted, which are biomass burning, road dust, vehicle emission, lead smelter, metal industry, and shipping activities. This result suggested that the lead smelter and metal industry have a major influence on the study area. The health risk assessment for the hazard question and excess lifetime cancer risk of lead, chromium, and nickel show values below one and slightly higher than the permissible acceptable level. It also shows that this heavy metal posing a health risk and can cause a possibility risk of cancer, which should be aware by the government. Continuous monitoring should be carried out to evaluate and improve their quality in the future. Thank you.